Hi there. Welcome to the first of a series of videos where we'll cover the different components that make up an m and &E framework. Today's video will focus on the most common one, how to design a results framework. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mutsakawa Chinyamakovu, and here we talk about all things m and &E. Now, what does a results framework look like? Normally, it's structured in three panels. First, you have your goal, and then you list your outcomes for that goal, and then you list your outputs. And outputs are less direct um, when related to the goal than outcomes would be. So let's start with a fun and easy example. Suppose I would like to teach my toddler to bake a cake. There are various outcomes that could come from this. I could actually end up with a toddler that can bake. And if I have a toddler that can bake, one of the outputs that I could have is that my toddler loves the kitchen. I could also have, as a result of that, a pantry that is always stocked up with baking ingredients. Another direct outcome of my goal is an edible cake. Maybe my toddler has done <laughs> the miraculous. And if I end up with an edible cake, Outputs that could come from that edible cake outcome would be dessert for the whole family. And if I was um, smart enough at the beginning of this exercise to put on a camera, I might end up with some YouTube worthy content. And finally, another outcome could be a messy kitchen. This is definitely going to be the case in whatever um, the outcome with my toddler and baking is, we will end up with a mess. And some of the outputs that could come from this are a learning opportunity for the toddler. They could learn how to wash dishes. And if I don't supervise that washing dishes exercise, I could end up with a higher water bill. This is a simple example of how to set up your results framework. Let's do a more technical example related to project management as we know it. Now suppose that we are aiming to equip 50 women in the Kwekwe region to become self-sustaining market gardeners. Some of the outcomes that could come from this could be composed of our various training components that we've meshed up together to make sure we achieve this goal. Maybe we've had these women go through a market gardening technical training. Maybe we've also done some market sourcing for our agripreneurs. And maybe we've also trained them on how to develop a sustainable business. And so they've got these three separate sets of trainings that are essentially aiming to achieve the goal that we have. And these three separate training sessions each have their own set of outputs. The market gardening technical training is something that results in environmental sustainability for our community. It also results in principles of market gardening and resource management. This could be a silo all on its own. This could be a training all on its own that's not necessarily set to achieve the goal that we have. And so that's why we consider outputs less direct when related to your goal. Let's go to our market sourcing for agripreneurs. That could result in a consumer market analysis. It could also result in pricing and differentiation, all in an effort to equip our agripreneurs. Our sustainable business development training could result in its own set of outputs. Our special agripreneurs or select agripreneurs could end up able to develop a business plan, able to fundraise, able to make projections on their businesses. They could end up with good HR management and operational procedures and bookkeeping as well as financial management skills, all as a result of this sustainable business development training that we have given them in conjunction with these other two outcomes to achieve our goal of making them self-sustaining market gardeners. This is an example of how we would structure a results framework. Direct results as outcomes and less direct results or rather indirect results as outputs. Now that we've seen what a results framework can look like, 
Let's discuss the principles behind this design. It's important to make sure that you have one goal per framework. If you think you might have more than one goal, try and think about whether some of those goals are actually outcomes relating to a larger goal. What is it really that you are trying to achieve? Try to make sure that you have no more than five outcomes. If you have plenty of outcomes, then your project is a lot more complex than is ideal for a results framework. I would suggest that if you have many outcomes, consider using a logical framework instead. And lastly, again, this is for simple projects. This is for low risk projects. You are normally able to just sit down and think about the risk associated with your project um, and write that in a simple short paragraph when you are using a results framework. More complex projects will have a lot more risk associated with them and you might have to look at the risk associated with each outcome and each activity and you have to go into that level of detail because your project is so complex. Results frameworks are for simple projects only. Finally, it's really important to understand the distinction between outcomes and outputs. Outcomes are the specific items that your goal is comprised of and they're directly related to that goal, whereas outputs are indirect results of achieving each outcome. Now, why is it important to have a results framework? If you only stopped at knowing the goal for your project, you may not recognize that an agripreneur who ended up switching to being an environmental activist may have been encouraged to do so by your program. This framework helps you understand the breadth of the effect your program could have and the various facets of people's lives that could be changed by it. Because at the end of the day, people are different. Just because we all bought the apples that you were selling, it does not mean we all went munching away. Some people will make juice, others will make jam, others will feed their horses. The possibilities are endless. And all of this is useful data that we can measure. Typically, you will find some projects will only report the numbers trained, for example. But if you really want to set yourself apart, you want to be able to talk about the skills that your beneficiaries have developed. You want to be able to talk about what business ventures they've started, whether it's market gardening or whether it's that they are now environmental activists all of this is useful data. You also want to maybe even talk about the jobs that have been created. Maybe your program is reaching beyond your direct beneficiaries. All of this is data that you would be able to collect if you just took the time to set up an M&E framework and set up your results framework to understand what is the ripple effect that could come from what you were trying to achieve. We'll end our video here for today. If you've enjoyed this quick tutorial, please follow us on datalab.africa. Please subscribe to our channel and please like this video. You can email me directly at mutsa at datalab.africa. And you can also have a look at our website for the different services around M&E that we provide. Thanks for listening. See you next time.